Hey viewers, this is a Fowler 4F locomotive as portrayed in Train Sim World 3 Peak Forest. It's an 060 tender locomotive. We're going to be moving this train around a little bit. The service I'm supposed to be doing is actually shunting in the quarry, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to run it light loco because I want to show you. See my other video for headlamp codes, but one in the middle is light loco. First thing you always need to do is open the door, climb aboard, close the door, and get into the driving position, which is here it's a standing position, in the other steam locos it's a seating position. Always do this to take over your train. Second thing you want to do is check your cylinder cocks. These are open. You can drop them down for closed or pick them up for open, or you can use the C key on your keyboard. Then say hello to your mate. G'day mate, how you doing? How's the fire looking? How about water in the boiler? Water in the boiler looks pretty good, but do you trust it? Well, no. What you should be doing is doing an, a gauge glass test to find out. Now, you're not the fireman, so you can do a quick test. Let that drain out and let it pick back up again. So there you go. It's risen smartly in the glass. You know there's plenty of water in the boiler. These ones you could do a full test by isolating and draining if you want to just to prove that you can actually isolate the glass. And if you close that up, you shouldn't get anything in there, and you don't, and you can pop it back up and it will fill up. These locomotives, the inlet and out, the water inlet and steam inlet are ganged together, so you can't do them independently. You would do that on both gauge glasses. A little bit hard to see one because it's behind the regulator, but you would always do both. All right, back into the driving position now. Let's have a look at the other, other things we've got. Up here we've got our vacuum brake gauge, so 21 is released, 0 is applied a lot. The brakes are generally applied by springs on vacuum stock and released with the vacuum. Next up is our boiler pressure, and the fact that it's up near the red line is why our safety valves keep going, because there ain't no slowing her down. No, she's going at it. She's very clean for a fireman, I have to say. Good work. No one likes a grotty fireman. You may or may not know I am, in fact, a fireman. But anyway, over here we've got the steam chest pressure gauge. Now, it can be seen by the driver, it's used by the driver, but it's also used by our fireman. And the reason it's used by the fireman is the more steam that's being used, the more steam they have to produce. So they have to keep an eye on what the driver is doing and meet the driver's needs. Up here we've got the whistle. Nifty. Good about time we had a new whistle. Over here, let's talk about brakes now. We've got the small ejector first up, so this will slowly create brake volume, and it can be closed or opened. Um, normally, you would keep that open while you were traveling, as it's useful to keep the vacuum pressure constant. Over here, we have the large ejector. So on a light engine, you probably never use it, but if you're hooked up to a train and you want to create a, a vacuum in a train quickly, or you want to recover the vacuum quickly after you have braked heavily, you can pull this lever and it will help your vacuum pick up. Now, it can't at the moment because the brakes are on, but it is fighting that, so it's making some. So let's just knock that off. Next thing to talk about is the combination brake handle. We've got the red lever, which moves both the vacuum brake, and you can see there's a lever in the middle there, and you'll see that start to go in when we get down here. There we go. That's the steam brake. So the combination brake applies both vacuum and steam at the same time. But you can use just steam by just yanking on this thing yourself. Now, controller and keyboard-wise, if you want to use those, the independent brake is the steam brake, and the train brake is the vacuum handle, the uh, red one. Next up, we've got the reverser. This thing is remarkably like the gearbox in your car. Right now, it's in what's called mid-gear. You can see that with the indicator here, halfway between forward and backward. This means it's in neutral. So if you were going to drive forwards, you want to put it in first gear. First gear is where you have the most torque, but the least speed. This is the most powerful position, and light loco, you wouldn't even dream of trying to start off at 75 because you will just wheel spin. So let's bring that back to about, that's yeah, mid 50s will be fine. If you've got a train on the back, somewhere between your mid 50s and 75. But the closer you get to 75, the more likely you are to wheel spin. 
as you get moving, we'll bring that back and I'll show you that in a moment. Let's just have a look at what's in front of us. Are we going forwards? Yes, we're going to go forwards. Yes, we're in the uh, Tunstead Quarry at the moment. We're supposed to go back down there, but we're not going to. We're going to go up here because I don't care. Alrighty, so back in the cab. Let's release the brakes, but wait. Wouldn't we just roll if we did that? Because look, we're on a bank. So yes, pop your regulator open just a little bit. That'll do fine. We've got our cylinder cocks open, so right now we'll be forcing any water that's accumulated in the cylinders out. And we release our brake. You'll notice the brakes start to come off. Vacuum's built up to 21 by the small ejector. And if we watch outside, you will see that we're starting to move. Let's go around the bright side, perhaps. Now that we're starting to move, we're using a lot of steam at the moment. So we can put this up a bit, use a lot more steam. Once you've got three or four chuffs, you can close your cocks because they've done their job. And here's hoping these points aren't set to the left. Let's just watch for a moment in case they are. No, they're not. Good stuff. All right, let's jump back in the cab. We're going to bring our reverser back to a more efficient position. So we're going to have less torque, less power, more speed. So we come back, our normal operating position is around about the 30-odd mark, so somewhere in the 30s will be fine. That's where you use the least steam, but you still have plenty of power. The closer you come back to mid-gear, the less steam you use, but the less power you've got, and eventually you'll get to the point where you'll just stop. So let's just knock our throttle off now, because I want to show you how to stop the light loco, and we'll cover braking and activity with trains later in another tutorial. So right now, let's just use the steam brake to stop our train. So I've just pulled that out a little bit. Nice, gentle stop. And there we go. If you release that, it will just go back in by itself and you will actually start to roll again. So what I want to do now is go backwards. I'm just going to pop the combination brake on so we don't go rolling away. And I'm going to bring our reverser. We're going to come back through the neutral mid gear and we're going to come back into reverse. Now, this train happens to be sitting on a quite a steep bank at the moment, so we really don't need much of a reverse, so I've just come into the 40s. If you're on the flat, come into the 50s. If it's facing uphill the other way, you might want to come into the high 50s or the 60s. So let's just release our brakes now, and we'll apply a little bit of power through the throttle, nice and gentle. You don't need much, you don't want a wheel spin. And you always be patient because the steam chest is actually modelled these days. It's not showing too much up there, but it is modelled these days. And it does make a bit of a difference on what's going on. So you can see the steam chest in our HUD down there. So give it a chance to do its job. So right now I'm going to throttle off. Now, if you were drifting backwards, there's nothing wrong with being in full back gear because you're not going to be using any steam and it's simplest on the mechanism. You would also, if you're going to be doing it for any great time, actually open up your cylinder cocks and that vents any steam you've got in the steam chest and it also prevents any accumulated water from causing you a problem because steam can be compressed, water cannot. Similarly, if we want to brake, it's the same deal. We can use the steam brake or we can just use the combination brake. It's always good practice when you stop, unless you're going to be moving again pretty much straight away, is open your cocks. I've already got mine open because we were drifting backwards. When you do stop and you're ready to sit there for a little while, put the train back into mid-gear. So this is a good neutral position and put your brake fully on. And that's how you would normally leave your train when you are stopped. And that's if it's for a station stop or you're stopping because you're shunting or whatever. It just means that you're maintaining control over your locomotive. Well, that's it for the 4F. It's a pretty simple machine. It's pretty straightforward. So enjoy yourself. Now, we don't have manual firing yet. And the assisted firing, to my mind, hmm, it's not really worth it yet because it's not quite right. So I would suggest not learning that at the moment, so I won't show it to you. Oh, there was one other thing. Sanders! Sanders work! Yeah, it's very handy when you're taking off, and it's wet. Mm. Anyway, we'll see that when we're trying to do some of the other activities, like banking, later on in other tutorials. So if you've got any questions about how to drive the 4F, let me know down below, and I will help you out. Alrighty, have fun, folks. See you later.